Well, good afternoon. This is Dr. Murray from Murray Natural Integrated Health here in Hastings, Nebraska. Just doing a short video for you here today on GERD, GERD and also other digestion uh, complaints, which uh, could if um, not just gastroesophageal reflux, but also uh, some people have constipation, diarrhea, they have bowel bloating, any of that, those types of problems. We're going to talk a little bit about that right now. First, kind of a good understanding of what you know, digestion, how I guess digestion occurs and happens, and what things are, are crucial um, aspects to address with patients. This is what I do with every patient. So it's a common um, kind of presentation when somebody comes in, they either have GERD, they may have all the tummy problems I just talked about. I will kind of go through just a little bit of a picture and, and talk to them about digestion. So let's assume here right here, this is the your mouth. Okay, so the foods come in to your mouth. They come down to your stomach, through your esophagus, and then in your small intestine, the duodenum, you've got your gallbladder, uh, liver and gallbladder, and you have your pancreas, kind of connect up to your small intestine. And so you have your small intestine, and that connects up to your colon, and then everything exits out through your colon. So there's a lots of aspects or different factors involved that affect digestion. First, before you even throw something into your mouth, digestion starts before that. It starts with your eyes and your ears and what you see and what you smell. You can start to salivate. So digestion actually starts before anything enters your mouth. Interesting to point out. Digestion then also starts to occur in your mouth. Mastication or the chewing of food. Not just the chewing of food, but also you in your in your saliva, you have salivary amylase, and salivary amylase is very important for the sake of digestion. That's why most experts will recommend, including me, to chew your food more. If you have GERD, reflux, tummy problems, constipation, diarrhea, especially as you age, and if your GI tract is slowing down, you should be chewing more. Everybody, they, they, they're very fast in their eating. They want to get done, get going. Well, unfortunately, if, if you're part of that kind of culture here in the United States, you may be um, causing a whole lot more of undue stress on your GI tract. There's lots of studies, by the way. I just brought up a couple here uh, from PubMed from different um, uh, clinical trials. Here are the, the Academy of Nutrition and Diet. I uh, just stated here that basically the poor digestion is related to not chewing enough. Uh, another one here, here. Uh, let's see another study. The evidence currently suggests that chewing may decrease self-reported hunger and food intake, possibly through alterations in gut hormone response. Ooh, that chewing and how much you chew, the foods you're taking down might actually affect your gut function, microbiome, right? The microbiome. So chewing most certainly is more important, not for the sake of just chomping up the, the, the foods into smaller bits, but also so that your saliva that has salivary amylase and actually an enzyme that helps you tear down your food can happen right there in the mouth. Now also because it's so, this is the first place that, that you can address things, <clears throat> you should be addressing the foods that are coming in. So there are lots of crummy foods. I have a GERD, our GERD protocol. And uh, if you'd like a copy of that GERD protocol, you just call our office and I, we'd be happy to send you, uh, email it to you. But it's just kind of a, a general GERD diet lifestyle re recommend recommendations. Uh, but yeah, so yes, definitely there's some foods, crummy foods, soda pop, obviously, and sometimes coffee and caffeine, chocolates, all those things, certain types of foods tend to be a little bit more inflammatory. And there's certain foods that are also good to help reduce gastro, um, well, GERD and, and all kinds of other um, gastrointestinal disorders. So if you want to copy that GERD, that GERD protocol, you go ahead and um, send us send us a message either to our email or call us and we'll get you a copy of that out to you. But <clears throat> the foods that come in, perhaps there's some foods you shouldn't be eating. Foods that perhaps your body just doesn't like very much. So with the food related testing that we do, sometimes that's a good idea. Uh, that's why if you do the GERD protocol, do some of those things, um, stay away from certain foods that are mentioned there, that's gonna be great, but some people need to test. Some people need to test to figure that out. So your foods come down into your stomach and you produce stomach acid, pepsin, certain enzymes help you tear down foods right there. Some people as they age, they start having B12 deficiencies. 
It's one in part because they're not making intrinsic factor that's made in the stomach. But so things slow down as we age, our muscles slow down as we age, our hair, our brain, a lot of those things get slow down as they age. And so can your ability to tear down foods in your stomach. Some people might need a digestive enzyme. They can take bromelain. Some people can take betaine and pepsin, and that can be a value. And so those are some of them that we will recommend with patients as well. Now, coming down through your small intestine, through the duodenum, duodenum and duodenum, uh, you get over to the liver and gallbladder and also your pancreas. And if you do not have a gallbladder anymore, which collects bile, your digestion is going to be compromised in some way, shape, or form. All the, your uh, fat-soluble vitamins, vitamins A, D, E, and K, also your essential fats, they will not be able to be absorbed as, as easily as they could previously when you didn't have a gallbladder. And if you just have your gallbladder removed, and I'm not saying you shouldn't have if you did, but if you did, the same kind of problem is kind of there. I mean, the gallbladder's gone, so the gallbladder's not feeling any pain. But the same reason why the gallbladder started having problems might still be an issue. And then you're already compromised. So some people actually need bile salts to take or some other digestive enzyme to help them digest their foods. And so you come down in the small bowel and then the large bowel. Now down here, there's where all the magic happens in terms of absorption, right? Uh, your stomach and stomach acid up here, that's where you're designed to tear things up. And that's why some people might need some digestive enzymes. Um, some people actually just eating a, an apple or taking um, you know, so, something like that might actually help to help them digest, digest their foods more, a potato even as well. But down in here, you have all the absorption that occurs, and this is also where all the critters kind of grow. And you have your microbiome, and you have certain bacteria that are up into the upper GI as well, lactobacillus, some of those. And, but down in your lower GI, you have all kinds of different microorganisms down there. And there is a proper amount, a healthy amount of microbiome of critters that should be present. And you can have not enough of the good guys down here populating and too many of the bad guys down here populating. And sometimes the reason why you don't have enough of the good guys is perhaps you need to take some. However, over 90% of all the probiotics that a person takes in, they do not make it down here because they're getting tore up right here on purpose, right? Bugs and viruses and, and different um, unhealthy things should be destroyed in the stomach acid. So making all the way down here, a lot of times those probiotics, you're taking XYZ probiotics and they're not getting absorbed. So you can test for any of these things, testing the good guys and the bad guys, inflammation in the bowel or small bowel, looking at your gut microbiome by looking at a stool test. So normally how I focus on these things, when patients come in and they have a lot of GI problems, I say, okay, we can test we can test for foods. You should be trying some other things, some, some conservative things to reduce the stress on your, on your gut, which would mean decreasing or eliminating alcohol and smoking, making sure that, you know, even weight can be an issue because it pushes up the diaphragm and all that pushes up the diaphragm, pushes, pushes up on your stomach. Um, so that can affect your digestion as well and create more of the GERD symptoms. You also, um, of course, you can just take a digestive enzyme and try things out like that. But if you're having more and more problems, you need to address the foods you're consuming, and that could be a food test. You also could be taking, like I said, some digestive enzymes, and actually a, your blood test gives an indication of, you know, what, what's your absorption of protein? What are your protein levels, albumin, um, globulins, any of those kinds of things? There's certain things in a blood test you can see if you're actually digesting properly, because if you've got symptoms, reflux, diarrhea, constipation, it may very well be that you're not absorbing your nutrients like you should. But then lastly, you can also do a stool test and perhaps even firstly, because this down here, it is important to have a good functioning microbiome biome in your intestines. You might be taking plenty of probiotics and they might not be populating at all. <laughs> and so you could test for that. Not to test is to guess, but to test is to know. And on a test, you can see whether, like I said, if there's too many of the bad guys present. Maybe your immune system in your gut just isn't working correctly. Maybe you have H. pylori, a certain type of infection. Maybe you have too many yeasts, candida that's going on there. And that can create a lot of symptoms all over your entire body. It can create leaky gut. It can, it can also 
you can start to have other allergic symptoms or autoimmune conditions because your gut is absorbing too much junk that it shouldn't. So that's kind of the saying I always give that is not to test is to guess, but to test is to know. And that's pretty simplistic, but it's very true. You say, well, you know what? Um, I'm having this problem. What's wrong? Well, you can test for that, right? So you can always shoot from the hip and try some things out. And if you'd like a copy of, like I said, that GERD kind of protocol, be happy to send that out to you. You go ahead, you send us a message, and we'll try to get that out to your, to your email if you like. They can also come and pick it up here, of course. Uh, but then, if you're still having problems, well, you need to test. Because we've had some patients that they have serious problems. They haven't for so, such a long period of time. And those serious problems become even more serious, right? Dangerous, dangerously serious. And so we want to get to root causes of conditions. That's always what we want to do here. We want to rule out something scary, send somebody else, send you somewhere else if you need to be somewhere else, but then make some truly some whole health treatment plans so your body's better able to heal, repair, and self-regulate based off of what your body is saying, not just based off of shooting from the hip and just trying something out. So if we can help you out with that, you give our office a call. They're at 402-463-4257. Murray Natural Integrated Health, setting the standard in natural health care. Have a blessed rest of your day.